Fournette, Fournette goes airborne. He's in. Touchdown, Jaguars. Tip and intercepted by Ramsey to close it out. It's over. The Jacksonville Jaguars have pulled off the upset of the playoffs. Oh. Sunday was quite a day, wasn't it? All right, before we get into this video, let me warn you that there are going to be some cuss words. And if you are here for Optimistic Treeb, unfortunately, you are not going to get them because this was a disgrace and honestly, probably our worst loss since 2016. It was a disgraceful loss. It was terrible. And we're going to dive right into it. So, ladies and gentlemen, I am Treeb from BigJReport.com. This is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Dallas Cowboys, week number six recap. Alrighty, before I dive into these special teams and offensive position grades, let's just get an overall recap of the 40-7, yes you heard that right if you have not seen the game, the 40-7 loss between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Dallas Cowboys. Not one thing about this game was pretty, not one thing in this game went our way. Everything was absolute trash, and it wasn't even that we were shooting ourselves in the foot. It looked like it was 2013, and we just could not compete with an NFL team. You remember those days? Remember when you used to watch a Jags game, and we used to get blown out all the time, only score 7, 10 points, 3 points maybe even, and just think, we are not an NFL team, we can't compete with guys at this level? That's how I felt against the Cowboys. Because the Cowboys, no offense to Cowboys fans, congratulations on the win. You guys looked awesome out there. But on paper, this looked like a game that the Jaguars should have handily, handily won. They have Dak Prescott, who honestly is not that great at quarterback. They don't have any big name wide receivers, and oh, we'll get into that later. And Ezekiel Elliott is really the only thing that you have to shut down. And it just seemed like the coaches just fucking went to shit on that. It's like Todd Wash thought this whole team had a bunch of Julio Joneses and Antonio Browns for how much he's playing fucking zone defense. Stop playing zone fucking defense. We have the talent, we have the caliber of players to go man to man, and we have the pass rush and the linebackers to get in there and blitz the quarterback as well. I don't understand. I don't get it. Yeah, mix in some zone every here and there when you feel necessary. Not 95% of the goddamn snaps should we be in a zone defense. We are getting eight and alive out there. These are soft zone coverage, bro. This is shit kids run in high school. This is NFL talent. And we're out here running zone defense against these teams. And we are shitting down our leg. We are not going to make the playoffs if we keep playing like this. It's not even all a player thing. It's a majority of a coaching thing. Doug Marone, as of right now, looks like the only competent coach that we have on our team. And I've been trying to say in a lot of my videos, especially when we were winning, Nathaniel Hackett, he's a good guy. He has a good idea, a good grasp on this whole NFL thing. He is shitting down his leg again. Just with these play calls. Who the fuck? calls an end around to your fucking second or third string tight end who's not even fast and then he gets hurt and he's out and now we're down to one fucking tight end one healthy tight end who the fuck calls a play like that who calls a play like that Nathaniel Hackett calls a play like that this is why people are coming for your head Nathaniel I think you have it in you to be a great offensive coordinator and I even think you have it in you to be a good head coach of some other team some other day I have your back I really do but when you call plays like that and you blindly go away from the run game when it's working when it's working I know we're down 10 0 7 0 3 0 whatever it is but just because we're in a little bit of a hole it's still the second fucking quarter man these are 15 minute quarters this isn't Madden <laughs> This isn't Madden when there's six minute quarters and yeah, you're down 10, you better fucking throw the ball. No, this is the NFL. And TJ Yeldon has been doing good all season long, man. And you keep going away from him. Just because we don't have Leonard Fournette in there doesn't mean we can't run the ball. Because TJ Yeldon this year has been an absolute fucking stud. And you are just going away from him. We didn't get Jamal Charles involved enough. And uh, we are going to get more into that. But I had to go in on the coaches, especially... Todd Watch, who I think we should fire, not right now, because you can't just fire a coordinator mid-season, but we need to get a better defensive coordinator, because Todd Wash ain't it, Chief. Todd Wash ain't it. All right. <clears throat> so I think in the same take, we're going to go over the special teams and offensive 
player grade. So for special teams, um, Josh Lambeau, basically the only thing I can talk about, he made an extra point. Logan Cook did bad. His punts were bad. He had like a couple of 30, 40 yard punts that were just awful. Logan Cook did not have a good game today. He just did. I know it's weird to talk about a punter, but did not have a good day. So now let's break down the offense. First and foremost, his offensive line had a pitiful, pitiful performance. I'm not going to rant too much about it because people are injured. You know, I understand that. But what I don't understand is all pro offensive guard Andrew Norwell that was supposed to help us and supposed to take our offense to the next level as number one rushing attack. Why the fuck is he struggling so bad? Why the fuck is he not playing to the caliber of player that he is? You know, the only offensive lineman right now that's playing competently is Brandon Linder. And that's still kind of shaky. Sometimes he does some debatable things and, you know, I'm like, what the fuck? But Brandon Linder's been the only offensive line that has consistently at least played decent. Everybody else has been letting in sacks. And I understand, I completely understand that there are injuries and, you know, that we can't do anything about it. But the fact is, is we don't, Blake didn't have any fucking time to throw the ball back there. And Blake has his own fucking problems that we're going to dive into in a little bit. But he had absolutely zero fucking time. People were coming off the edge. People were coming right up in his face. He was getting hit every fucking play. I thought last week the offensive line did bad. This week they did worse. Another F grade for the offensive line. Another F grade. That's two F grades in a row for the offensive line who are just playing completely awful football. Last year we had a great stout group. That didn't get hurt that much. See, this is what I think the Achilles heel is to a lot of Jags fans and the Jags in general this year. Is that last year we were spoiled. We were spoiled with not a lot of injuries. We lost Allen Robinson, yeah. But other than that, man, we were healthy across the board. We were dominating. People weren't expecting it. You know, and now people have the blueprint to beat us and we're just folding. And we are just folding. And it's just ugly. It's ugly, ugly football out there. And yeah, offensive line gets an F. Running backs, TJ Yeldon, he did good. He did just fine. He did exactly what he needed to do. Just got, I believe, over 90 yards all purpose. TJ Yeldon is an asset to this offense, and it just keeps getting proven more and more that he's probably going to get signed back next year and make more of a difference on the offense. TJ Yeldon's had a hell of a year since Leonard Fournette's gone out. Could you imagine his numbers if Nathaniel Hackett doesn't just shy away from the run game all the time? TJ Yeldon, who's already, I believe, 7th, 8th in the league in rushing yards. I don't know what he ranks all purpose, but 7th or 8th in rushing yards. And he's deadly in the receiving game as well, you know. And, like, he's a great, he's a good running back. He's a running back that we could really rely on. And, you know, that's what I get mad about, too, is these announcers, man. They're always like, Leonard's out. You know, TJ Yeldon was good in the rotation with Leonard. No, TJ Yeldon's a good fucking running back. And you guys need to feed him more. And you need to not shy away from the run game so much. Also, we did not get Jamal Charles involved a lot like I wanted to. I understand he's probably le learning the playbook. But I think a good change of pace, a little mix-up would have been cool uh, if we gave Jamal Charles the ball just a little bit better. But the running backs really are the only decent and bright spot on the offense. We're going to give him a C. Um... <clears throat> I think TJ Yeldon did good. Jamal Charles didn't do too great. But, you know, again, they went away from him too early, so it's kind of hard for me to give him a really high grade. And right now, uh, sitting at a C, I think, is fair. Now let's dive into the wide receivers and tight ends. They cannot catch a fucking cold. Keelan Cole's fumble was absolutely atrocious. You've seen that coming. That boy holds the ball weirder than anybody I've ever fucking seen in my entire fucking life. And, dude, uh, it was just, it was just bad, man. Like, they couldn't get open. You know, Dante Moncrief, who is just a guy that I think we wasted a lot of money on. I understand he's had a couple of big games, but definitely not the guy that's worth the money that we're paying him. Uh, D.D. Westbrook had a good game, which he so often does now, and I think that he is emerging as the number one wide receiver. I hate to say I told you so, but I told you so earlier uh, in the offseason that D.D. was going to do this. And he, <clears throat> he had the lone touchdown catch, which was a pretty good throw by Blake Bortles, and it was a good route, good catch, uh, all those things from D.D. Westbrook. And, you know, <clears throat> D.D. continues to be the shining star on this uh, wide receiver group. So these wide receivers are going to get a D. They couldn't get open. They couldn't catch the ball. Uh, like I said, D.D. Westbrook, really the only shining spot of this entire wide receiver group. 
Oh boy, what are we at? We're at nine minutes of this take. Right now, ah fuck, probably gonna get to like 12 minutes. Blake fucking Bortles, man. I love you. You literally have been the fucking centerpiece of my heart for the last four years, man. I've defended you. I've gone out on a limb for you. I have people that are always like, Tree, why do you like Blake Bortles so much? He's so bad. And I try to tell him that you're not that bad. But, dude, you are that bad. Right now, man, it's just like you've cheated on me so many times, man. And now I'm just finally had it. And I'm going to cut you loose, man. Blake Bortles is not the answer, unfortunately. He had a terrible game this week. He threw the pass into triple coverage. You can't do that now, Blake. I understood it. Maybe in your first two years. Maybe even your third if I'm being a little lenient. But now that you're in year five and you see double coverage, don't fucking throw the ball. I don't care how much we're down and you're like, fuck it, let's see if he can make a play. Don't throw that fucking pass. It should be easy. It should be an easy thing to not do. But you still go out and do it. Why? Why do you do this to me? Why do you do this to my heart? Why? I want you to be a good quarterback so fucking bad. The whole city of Jacksonville wants you to be a good quarterback so fucking bad. But right now, we're sitting back. Every single Blake Bortles believer, unless the, you know, you're the firmest Blake Bortles believer, have kind of turned, your back, turned our backs on you now. We're thinking about the draft. We're thinking about who the fuck we're going to draft to bring in. But you would think now that he signed this contract that maybe he's our quarterback for the next two to three years, guaranteed no matter what. <sighs> but Blake, man, you got to be better. You got to be better. I mean, maybe these next couple of weeks you could string something together, especially in this Houston game that they must fucking win that, again, I won't be live for and I won't <clears throat> be able to watch it either because I will be gone. And that sucks. That sucks bad because now it's just the must watch and I can't watch it. But maybe it's going to be a good thing I can't watch if it's another atrocious game like this one. Now let us give the offense a final grade. Their final grade today is going to be a D-. minus. Just the absolute worst performance I've ever seen from this offense all season long. And I thought the Chiefs game was going to be as bad as it gets. And the Chiefs are actually a good team, so I kind of could put up with it. But to do this against the Dallas fucking Cowboys, terrible. D-. fucking minus for this Jaguars offense. Now let us hop into the defense's position grades. Now this is the elite defense, you know, supposed to be on par with the 2012 Seattle Seahawks, supposed to be on par with the 2000s Ravens. But this year, man, you guys are absolutely terrible. <sighs> that hurts to say. There's so much talent on the team, but we can't back it up. I don't know how much of it, I don't think a lot of it is a player issue. I think it's a big, big Todd Wash issue. Todd Wash, I don't understand how you have all pros in almost every single fucking position and you still manage to fuck up play calls. Why are you in zone defense all the fucking time when you have two all pro corners, in my opinion, the two best corners in the NFL? You have them. Why do you not run man coverage? Why do you not run man coverage? It's simple. All right, let's first talk about the pass rush. <coughs> the pass rush got after it in the second half. The first half was fucking awful. Like I said, we can't be called Saxonville until further fucking notice because we cannot get after a goddamn quarterback. I understand this Cowboys offensive line is good, but you guys got bullied on both sides of the ball. This is the big matchup I was talking about all week. It's even in my fucking preview thumbnail. The offensive line versus the defensive line of the Jags and Cowboys. That's going to be the matchup. And you know what? You guys shit down your leg. It wasn't even a competition. It was kind of like the whole fucking game. It wasn't even a fucking competition. Man, Calais Campbell couldn't get after the quarterback. Fucking Malik Jackson couldn't get after the quarterback. Marcel Darius couldn't. Okay, let's talk about that fucking red zone play. Let's talk about that red zone play. What the fuck are you guys doing? Rushing two and dropping everybody back and Dak Prescott still completed the pass. What the fuck is going on there? Can you tell me? Can you tell me what's going on? Because I sure as fuck can't. I don't know why that would be a good idea. 
I don't know if that was a miscommunication thing or if that was actually the dialed up defense. If it was, that was fucking terrible. It's fucking awful. <sighs> One thing I do want to say though, Yannick and Gokwe, if we could take any positives away from this game, had two sacks, so that's good to see. Uh, he stepped up in the second half. The whole pass rush kind of did as a whole. I think Yan was the only one to get after the quarterback getting two sacks. So that was good, and uh, congratulations to him for the two sack, his first two sack performance on the day, on the year. But as a final grade for this defensive line, I'm going to give him a C. They, Yan kind of helped him step up in the second half. But that whole thing, man, with everybody dropping back into coverage except for two people, I just do not fucking understand. I do not fucking understand what's going on. It's like fucking Gus Bradley's back and Jed Fish and... Whoever the fuck our defensive coordinator was before Todd Watch, I can't even think about who it was now. Oh, fucking Babich or Batch or something, I think. The answer that was. You know, the fucking no-namers we used to have as fucking defensive coordinator, we got Todd Wash, and Todd Wash is just fucking terrible right now. The secondary. Again, a little tricky subject to talk about here. Because I don't know how much of it is players, and I don't know how much of it... It's just this zone defense Todd Wash is running. But they made fucking Dak Prescott and Cole Beasley look like the second coming of Joe Montana and Jerry Rice. Fucking, take a second to think about that. L like, listen to the whole statement I just fucking said. J the secondary made Dak Prescott and Cole Beasley look like Joe Montana and Jerry Rice. Think about it. Think about it. Like, what the fuck? What are you guys doing? What are you guys thinking? Like, oh my god, man. I just can't get over how angry I am. And just, like, me ranting right now. Like, I never expected me. I never expected me to ever do this, really. This season, at least. To come out here and just fully rant about how bad our team's doing. But that's where we're at right now. Last year, we went 3-3. Three and three to start the six, uh, the first six weeks of the season. Yeah, I get that. But our expectations last year were so much fucking lower than they are now. Right now, our ceiling is so fucking high that 3-3 three and three feels like we are just shitting down our legs, man. I understand that the AFC South is still up for grabs and we got a big game against Houston next week. I get that. But right now, we're not going to beat anybody in the playoffs. Do you think we'll beat New England again? Come around second time? Probably not. Kansas City will fucking decimate us if we don't change anything up. And then you got, let's see, okay, so that's the West, the East, the North, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh will probably beat us now. It's just, that's just the way she goes. That's just the way she goes. And, you know, it's, it's just, you know, man, it's all about the playoffs. Like, if we just play like this, man, it's not, it's not going to be pretty. Anyway, the secondary, C, D. D minus, D plus, because I think a lot of it is scheme, but I also think a lot of it is kind of shitting down our own legs, so D, D for the secondary, the linebackers, you know, I always say, this is kind of the bright spot of our defense, Miles Jack, Leon Jacobs, Leon Jacobs had a great game today, I will give that hint, I'll give him that, as well as Miles Jack, Miles Jack put together a good game, but Telvin Smith, bro, you cannot cover anything to save your entire fucking existence. Anything, anyone, at any time. You're just so bad at coverage, I don't fucking understand. It's just, it's so hard to watch, because you know you throw it and you see 50, he's behind him. I mean, he's, he's just, the receiver's behind him, dude, It's he's gone. Telvin can't do shit in coverage. And for that alone, we're going to give the secondary, I mean the linebackers, a C+. The first time I've given these linebackers anything less than a B, if that doesn't speak volumes on how frustrating this game was and how bad I really feel like the Jags did, I don't know what will. <sighs> terrible, terrible, terrible. Now let us dive into our defense's final grade. Now I'm going to be giving them a little bit of a higher grade than you may expect. I'm going to give them a C-. minus. Why? I understand we gave up 40 points to the Cowboys. I really, really do. And I really, really understand that we did really, really bad. But how much of it is a player's fault and how much of it is a coaching issue? Because I think a lot of it is a coaching issue. I think Todd Wash is the big thing. I think Todd Wash is an incompetent right now defensive coordinator. And he needs to fucking stop calling zone defenses. That's all you have to do. 
You can call a couple of zones here and there, not the whole fucking game. You run a zone defense at the goal line, bro. Why? Why? Why do that? Why do that? You're just making yourself look fucking silly. Now it is time for my favorite time of the week, your favorite time of the week, and everybody's favorite time of the week, Players of the Week. And this has never been a harder, uh, this has never been a harder task. I know who I'm going to give it to on offense, and I'm going to be giving it to the man that I think at the end of the year is going to end up being Offensive Player of the Year. For the fourth time, TJ Yeldon, congratulations, you are going to be Offensive Player player of the week we went away from him way too early you know he has the highest yards per average out of any player on the Jags right now he's balling out of his mind but we keep on going away from him so you wouldn't really know that but yeah TJ Yeldon for the fourth not straight but for the fourth week out of six TJ Yeldon has one offensive player of the week that speaks volumes man let's pay this guy next year I think he can make a difference he's a good running back Fourth out, fourth time out of six weeks, he's offensive player of the week. That definitely, definitely speaks volumes. Just realized I forgot the special teams because there just was not a lot to report. We're gonna give it back to Dr. Lambo. He made the extra point. That's about it. Uh, Logan Cook had a really bad game, so congratulations, Josh Lambo, most handsome man on the team, without a doubt in my mind. Anyway, now back to the defense. Uh, we talked about it a little bit earlier. Yannick and Gawkway, uh, he managed to notch. Two sacks on the day, which is enough to give him Defensive Player of the Week. Finally, Yannick Ngakwe uh, gets a Defensive Player of the Week. He's been out there pulling, but, I mean, he's just hasn't put up the stats. I mean, he gets after the quarterback. They just usually throw it away. But congratulations, Yannick Ngakwe, TJ Yeldon, and Josh Lambeau. In a shit week, you guys are Players of the Week. And that was my Jacksonville Jaguars versus Dallas Cowboys week number six. Recap, position grades, and players of the week. What'd you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check the links down below as well. Don't forget to like me on Facebook at True Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Trevon Pixley and follow me on Instagram at Trayvon Pixley. And also just set up a Patreon account, patreon.com forward slash Treeb Talks. If you want to donate, get some exclusive Treeb Talks content down the road. We are also working on some merch for you guys, so stay tuned for that as well. Also, if you haven't, please click that subscribe button, click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new Jaguar content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody outworking me. Them to just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and as always, you guys have a great day.